Kia ora and welcome to the CoreLogic Property Market Update for PPD 2022. As the property market continues to weaken, speculation now turns to how deep and how long this phase will go. From a transaction perspective, we know that the time to sell has lengthened considerably. Though there are signs of greater alignment when it comes to buyer and vendor price expectations, with total listings for sale now flattening out at around the highest levels for at least two years. Sales volumes remain very low, probably not helped by the cooler weather kicking in as we know market activity tends to slow over the winter months. Volumes over the three months to the end of May total just over 19,000, which is 30% down on the same period last year, and 20% down on the long-term average. In fact, if we ignore the lockdown impacted months of 2020, we have to go all the way back to 2011 in the aftermath of the global financial crisis to find a time when the market was this quiet. Naturally then, comparisons to the experience of the GFC are becoming more regular. And while the peak to trough value drop back then was 10% nationwide, which could potentially be exceeded this time around, we should also take note of the long road to recovery, with the market taking five years to recover those losses. Now, that's not to say the market conditions are the same as back then, they're not. But there's actually a case to say the starting point now poses more risk, with many affordability measures painting a more difficult picture today than at the end of 2007 especially for aspiring and recent market entrants. Add an environment of rising interest rates, which is the opposite of the late 2000s, and it's easy to understand why expectations seem particularly pessimistic. This is especially the case when it comes to assessing potential demand for property, which is likely to remain restrained for the foreseeable future. This is not necessarily due to a lack of desire from prospective home buyers but more so a reduction in the ability to borrow at the levels required to sustain previously achieved house prices. Of course, the Reserve Bank has a few levers which could provide a boost to demand should they require it. The question is whether a recession is the trigger to prompt it. LVR restrictions are as tight as they've ever been. The forecasted official cash rate implies a steep trajectory. And while DTI limits aren't officially mandated, we've seen banks already start to reduce their exposure in this space. While a recession isn't guaranteed, it's certainly being discussed. The implications of a recession, a shrinking economy, reduced business profits, and perhaps most importantly, increasing unemployment, should not be ignored, and I doubt they are. But the possibility does add doubt to the likelihood of the OCR eventually reaching 4% by the middle of 2023. The worst fears for the mortgage rate peak should probably also be smoothed by the competitive pressures the banks might face amidst reduced sales activity with a clear incentive for sharp refinancing rates or even cashbacks, as we're already seeing. Right now, we're fighting the greater beast of inflation, and that's understandably the focus for those making the calls at the bottom end of the terrace in Wellington. And perhaps the hope has to be that simply the idea of future aggressive hikes, on top of a 1.75 percentage point increase already, tightens people's pockets and slows inflation. Meanwhile, our central bank remains one of the international leaders of the hiking pack, though other major players are catching up quick, or indicating plans to do so. And despite our direct links to the Fed in America not being all that strong, an aggressive hiking cycle from such an economic powerhouse will have flow-on effects to the cost of money all around the world. The key linkage is higher wholesale interest rates which feed into our domestic fixed mortgage rates. You'd be forgiven for thinking it all sounds a bit grim, and the outlook for demand probably is. However, for the correction to turn into a crash, we'd still need to see a concurrent lift in supply, particularly from motivated vendors willing to cut their price expectations. The motivation could come from different sources. For owner-occupiers, higher mortgage payments will tighten the squeeze on their wallets, but with serviceability tested and equity present through LVR requirements, it may not be enough on its own to encourage people to sell, and sell for less than they want or need. A drop-in or a loss of income is the one to watch for this to play out, hence the importance of our labour market and resulting unemployment rate. For property investors, costs from many angles are increasing. They'll have to bear the brunt of mortgage rate increases themselves, alongside inflationary pressures affecting maintenance costs and healthy home standards requiring greater investments in their assets. Add on super low yields, reduced capital growth expectations, and the phasing out of the ability to deduct interest costs from tax returns, and they're faced with a less profitable proposition, in the short term at least. Of course, for those who have been in the market for a while, they should have a significant equity buffer, 
so future prospects may come down to cash flow. Heightened rental growth may have helped keep up with some of the increased costs recently, but with rental growth somewhat anchored by tenant income in the long run, we don't expect those rates of growth to continue forever. More recent investors may be keener on an earlier sale if things aren't going well. Though the bright line test, which for many will be set at five years, may see those who bought prior to the pandemic holding on to save themselves paying tax on the recent capital gains achieved. Thus, delaying the potential of a large uplift in properties being brought to market. Plenty to watch out for as we navigate this phase of the market. If you want to track recent price movements, right down to a suburb level, our mapping the market tool has just been updated. Check it out through the research tab at corelogic.co.nz. You'll also find more detail on the current investor landscape, including data on potential yields on offer across the country. Ngā mihi o te Māori. Mātewa.